What's going on guys, go back to another video, and today I'm reviewing The Green Goblin's Last Stand, or Spider-Man The Green Goblin's Last Stand. It doesn't have Spider-Man in the title, so I'm going to call it The Green Goblin's Last Stand. So this is another Spider-Man fan film, and this is one of the very first ones. Well, there was actually the first one back when Spider-Man was first created. So yeah, there were a couple of Spider-Man fan films before this, but they're probably long gone. I mean, PSM, probably Spider-Man, talked about the very first Spider-Man fan film, but... I don't know if it's on YouTube or whatever, but this one is, and this even has a documentary of the making of it. So, the person who directed this also plays Spider-Man, and he did a good job as Spider-Man, in my opinion. Like, I think he's probably my favorite actor in this fan film. So, yeah, but I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like this fan film. Like, I know it's really low budget, like, very low budget, especially compared to every other Spider-Man fan film and every other fan film I've seen, like, I think Superman Solar had a bigger budget than this fan film, and I felt like the acting in Superman Solar was better, like, I'm sorry, it's just, I felt like the acting in this movie was awful, like, again, like, I think the budget was $4,000, or $400, I have no idea, it, it, again, and it was also made in the 90s, so this is, like, pro of all the fan films, this is definitely the one that is the longest and the oldest one I've seen, so I guess I could let that slide, but, you know, I kind of expected a bit better for acting, because for all the fan films I've seen, I've seen some pretty decent acting, so this is probably the, one, the first fan film I saw where I don't like it. The film is based off the death of Gwen Stacy storyline, and the people behind this fan film are genuine fans of Spider-Man, especially the actor who plays Peter Parker. And I think the actor, the actor who plays Peter is, oh man, Dan Poole, yeah, I think that's the director's name, and the actor. Like, I think he wanted to play Spider-Man, James Cameron's upcoming Spider-Man film, so this was sort of an audition or or prototype, I guess, for him being Spider-Man, but... It didn't happen in the end, so I guess it doesn't matter. But hey, at least he made a Spider-Man film that fans could enjoy. And this makes me wonder, before the internet, like, where did people get the fan films? Like, were it just at a VHS store? Like, is that would be like, hey, cool, Spider-Man fan film. Like, is that it? Or, I don't know. Like, someone in the comment explained where did people get fan films back then before the internet existed. I'll discuss some pauses before I get into the negative. The story for this fan film is actually good. I mean, it's an adaption of the death of Gwen Stacy, and that's one of the best Spider-Man stories ever made, and most iconic Spider-Man story ever made, next to Spider-Man Blue and the Kid Who Collects Spider-Man, which were adapted in Spider-Man Lotus. So, th so, yeah, this fan film is on the death of Gwen Stacy, and Lotus is on the aftermath of Gwen Stacy's death. So, yeah, that's funny. The story is an okay adaption of the death of Gwen Stacy. Obviously, they didn't have the budget to be on a bridge and, you know, do it fully accurate, so they just went on a rooftop, Pierre's apartment, and yeah, that's how Gwen dies. But it's kind of similar to how it is in the comic, except not as great, because a lot of people complain, like, oh, we really don't know these versions of the character in Spider-Man Lois, and I'm watching this thinking, like, yeah, this is kind of the same thing, like, we don't know th this version of Gwen and Peter. I mean, I'll give them credit, at least this fan film shows them actually being a couple, and they've been a thing for now two years, so, yeah, they hit their two-year anniversary, and Green Goblin had amnesia, and Norman Osborn, uh, you know, becomes Green Goblin once again, and remembers everything, and then Harry disappears for a while, then he returns for only, like, one scene, which... The actor who plays Harry does a pretty good job for the small t amount of screen time he had. I think my favorite actor is, of course, the director himself, the actor who played Peter Parker. I think he did a very good job, and if James Cameron's Spider-Man film was made, I would prefer this actor, Dan, um, Poole. Dan Poole, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, over, um, Leonardo... Leo Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio is a good actor. He would have been good for a young Spider-Man in the 90s. But the actor playing Peter in this fan film just looked way more comic accurate. Like, you look at him, you're like, yeah, that's Peter Parker. Like, I just didn't... I don't think Leo DiCaprio has the head shape of Peter Parker, in my opinion. And also, what I like is the swinging scenes in this fan film. Like, the actor literally wanted his shots to be perfect. Like, literally, he had a rope that, of course, looked like a web, and was swinging on actual buildings. Like, no safe equipment or anything. Like, he was risking his own life to get this fan film per to be perfect. 
like, I give that guy credit because, like, that's amazing. Like, you are very passionate that you could almost die. Like, he, he was very passionate about this. Like, I'll give him credit for that. Even if I didn't like it, at least, you know, he was risking his life to make this fan film. So, I'll give him that. And I like the actress who played Gwen. I thought she did an okay job. I mean, she's kind of cute, but I think she does a decent job. She's definitely better than the actor who plays Green Goblin, who is probably, in my opinion, the worst actor in this film. Despite how fucking awful the Green Goblin Max looks in this fan film, the actor playing Green Goblin was just very over-the-top and dramatic with his acting. Like, yeah, I know Green Goblin's a very dramatic villain, like we see it plenty of time in the comics, but I'm talking about when he's just Norman Osborn, when he goes crazy. It's like, dude, you're getting a little over-the-top. It's like, you might want to back it down a little, because there are some scenes that's supposed to be taken seriously, like when he's illu seeing illusions of Spider-Man and running into the streets trying to find Spider-Man, and he's fighting thugs who he mistakes for Spider-Man. It's like... Dude, you're very overdramatic with your acting. Like, tone it down a little. Like, I know this was before Willem Dafoe mastered the portrayal of Green Goblin for how he speaks, and everyone tries to do that ever since. But, like, y you gotta tone it down, man. I'm sorry. At least this Green Goblin actor's not a pedophile, so he gets that. Despite this guy not doing a very good job and having an awful mask, he at least is not a terrible person. I like Spider-Man's costume in this fan film, especially the Max when it's not on the side. Like, when it's when the Max is face forward in front of us, it actually looks really good. But then when it's on the side, it looks terrible. Like, it looks like Frankenstein's wearing the Max when you just go on the side. I mean, look at this. It looks terrible on the side. It's like, man, like, the poster for this fan film made it look amazing. But when you look at it on the side, it's like, oof, that head shape does not age well. In fact, I don't think it aged well when it first came out. And that's all I gotta say about The Green Goblin's Last Stand. The story was pretty decent, but the acting was hit or miss, especially for the Green Goblin actor. Like, again, I think he did a terrible job. Like, I don't think he did a great job. Like, yeah, some of the other actors had terrible moments, especially with Spider-Man, but he still was enough where it's like, yeah, he's my favorite actor. And the film ends where, you know, he's talking to Gwen's grave, and of course, Green Goblin dies at the end of the film, like in the comic, obviously. And he's talking to Gwen's grave, and it, and he stands up and he's like, I still have to be Spider-Man. And it's so over the dramatic and over the top. It's like, you got such an emotional scene, and then you just ruin it with that. It's like, we're not even going to talk about the, you don't talk my Gwen scene, because, oh man, that's a scene for itself. It's like the shocker, except if it was bad. Like, the shocker scene in the animated series is legendary. Like, it actually goes towards, like, wow, it's great acting, to be honest, like, so, well, it's kind of over the, t it's over the top, but it's in a good way, where this fan film is just over the top, but not in a good way. So in my conclusion, I'm going to give The Green Goblin's Last Stand a 5 out of 10. I was actually going to give it something lower, like a 3 or a 4, but I figure a 5 out of 10 would be generous. So, yeah, not the best Spider-Man fan film, but certainly not the worst. I'm sure there's one that's much worse out there. The one, the very first Spider-Man fan film that PSM talked about doesn't seem that great, at least what I saw. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe this isn't the worst Spider-Man fan film so far. So, yeah, 5 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll probably see you guys next time when I review the season finale for My Adventures with Superman or the next episode for Holly Quinn Season 4, which is Episode 8. Or I might do a second viewing of Spider-Man Lotus. But I think I might do that once I finish Holly Quinn Season 4 and My Adventures with Superman.